What's up YouTube? In this video, I'm going to talk about what is wholesale real estate for beginners and how is that relevant to Malaysia property landscape. Hi, I'm Danny Ko, I'm property investor, business owner and author. Now just to let you know that this video will be slightly over 10 minutes. So if you already know what the wholesaling property is, then you can click on the description and then there is a timestamp where you can get the topic that you want. First thing first, now what is wholesale real estate or wholesale property? I know what you think. Now this is not what you think. Wholesale property is not buying multiple properties from a seller at a discounted price. So basically, you determine the price with the seller and then you sell it to the investor at a higher price. It is really that simple. Now on Malaysia perspective, this is basically a broker that we see outside. Now you may ask, isn't that wholesale strategy? Same as a flipping strategy? I can tell you that it's not the same because in the wholesale strategy, you basically don't put anything. And in fact, flipping strategy, you requires time and capital upfront to secure the property. And the flipping strategy, you really need to own the property. Where else the wholesale strategy, you don't need to put any capital and then you don't need to actually own the property. All you have is an agreement with the seller. There are many advantages to the wholesale strategy. Number one, no upfront costs. Unlike flipping, in wholesale strategy, you don't need any upfront payment at all. All you need is just an agreement with the seller. Number two, no renovation. You may need to renovate or touch up the unit, the property, if you are using flipping strategy. However, if you are using wholesale strategy, you don't need to renovate or touch up the unit at all. Number three is fast. If you are going to use the flipping strategy, then it really depends on the market condition for you to flip the property out. Reason being, you need to make profit for the capital that you invested in the property. However, in wholesaling strategy, there is not much stress and financial burden into it because you didn't invest any capital in it. So the sale of the property is much quicker. So you can easily, you don't need to wait for the market to recover so long you are profitable. Stay until the end as I will share with you steps how you acquire your first wholesale property. Now before we go any further into the steps how you can acquire your first wholesale property, this is what I want to remind you if you're going to run as a business. Now if you are serious to um, build your career or start a business in property, then I would suggest for you to really increase your knowledge in property. Now the reason is because you're dealing with the seller and not to mention you're dealing with investors. Now investors, there are many types of investors, especially those seasoned investors. They know what they want. The last thing they want is to see somebody is not competent enough, somebody is unable to advise them and somebody not even well versed in the property. So that is the reason if you're really, really serious in running a business, make sure that you're really competent, you know what you are selling, you know what you are offering and of course you know that you can give value to the seller and at the same time to the investors as well because the investors will eventually they will all returning customers of yours. So make sure this is one of the steps that you there's no way you can skip. If you're serious enough, you're not going to fly by night all those brokers or the investors. So make sure you really, really pump up on the knowledge on how whole property market works. Second is learn negotiation skill. Now, not only that you need to negotiate with the seller, but at the same time, you need to negotiate with the investors as well. Because when you're dealing with the seller, you will try to get as much as the margin that you can get from the seller. But at the same time, when you going to promote to your investors, they will negotiate with you as well. And that's why your negotiation skill is very, very important. I cannot stress hard enough for this. And not to forget that property is a people 
business because although property is an asset, they're tangible thing, but you are actually dealing with a human being, a people, people with emotions. So that's why when you know how to negotiate, how to leverage on the skill, then you will most probably be successful in this area because you'll be able to negotiate for the good deals and at the same time you can actually negotiate with the investors to persuade them to um, to let them know how good is the property the last and the most important thing that I recommend for you to do is to build your investors pool now if you're really serious to go this long term you have to build your client base now, no matter how good are you in, in getting the deals from the seller, how good the price that you get from the seller, but unfortunately, if you don't have the investors ready with you, then it's very hard for you to shop around to find the investors. Now, investors, they are buying because of trust, because of the value that you give them. So if I don't know you, if I'm the investor, I don't even know you, it makes it a little bit hard for me to, to buy from you. So instead of find the property first, if you're thinking to go for long term, I would suggest you to build your um, investor pool first. The, the likelihood for your property to be transacted is much higher because they already know you, they know what you do and they trust you here are the six steps how you can secure your first wholesale property number one finding the seller there are a lot of way how you can find the sellers for you to do the wholesale property the easiest one is to go through your friends and family members or friends of friends that they intend to sell the property the other way how you can find the potential seller is through joint management body jmb in malaysia this is the building management okay in the state it is called home owners association the especially the owners of the property we need to contribute to pay for the maintenance of the building so every month we need to pay for the maintenance of fee to upkeep the building so what happened is that those owners that default okay that they didn't pay for the maintenance fee their name will be listed on the communal notice board Okay, so uh, people can see who's actually defaulting on their maintenance fee. So what is the strategy here? The strategy is that you can look up on the list and then contact the owner, find a way to contact the owner and ask them, would they like to sell the property? Okay, so this is how you are going to approach a potential seller. Now, this list is like it's a public in the building itself so long you can get access to the building you will able to see the list who's actually defaulting and then subsequently you can contact them that would be your potential seller number two getting the market value for the property there are many ways how you can get the market value for the property first you can go to listing website property listing for example a like property guru i property all these websites then you can average out how much is the asking price for similar size property in the same project. For example, if we are looking at a condo A and then we look into the property website, similar size example like 950 square feet, how much is the asking price in the market and then we triangulate with other websites and then do the average. This is how we determine how much is the asking price in the market for similar property. Now, once you determine the asking price for the property in the market, the next thing you need to do is to check for past transacted price. Now, how are you going to find the past transacted price of the property is for you to go to brickz.my and edge property. Now, you need to do a search for the similar property on these two websites. From there, you will get how much is the past transacted value for that property. With that, you can compare the asking price 
and then with the parts transacted price only then you'll be able to determine what's the fair value of the property it might not be the the most accurate but at least you get approximate you won't be far away from how what's the uh, the figure that you're going to get the final fair value for the property so the next one is that once you get all this figure in mind then you need to lock the price with the seller step number three determine your profit margin now once you get the approximate market value for the property it is time for you to determine how much you want to get profit from this deal how you're going to set your price is that you need to understand who is your target audience is now what i mean target audience is your investor you need to understand what the investors are looking for example like myself all my investors i know they want like uh, undervalued property so we are looking at 10 to 15 percent or maybe 20 percent minimum for certain kind of property so from there if i if i need like five percent of profit margin then i need to narrow down if the investors are looking for 20 percent then i need to narrow down 25 percent from the market value with the seller but of course you need to make sure that you don't press on the price too much because if you press on the price too much, you will put off the seller. The seller is not going to talk to you the next day. So make sure you don't too harsh on the price and as well on the investors as well. So if it's not workable, if, if, if the property, it doesn't make sense to have 20% in the market, it never seen one. So although it's a good deal, but it doesn't make sense because the, there's no such property with that kind of uh, undervalue. So that one you need to make sure that you need to do your due diligence correctly because not all the properties you can actually get 20%. The most you can get is 10%. So try don't invent the whole wheel because if it doesn't exist, don't make something to exist, right? So you get me. Don't do something that's out of the norm. So you will get yourself um, disappointed for not getting um, the things that you want because you're creating something out of the ordinary okay so you get my point step number four negotiate with the seller this is the step where your negotiation skill comes in handy now the art of negotiation with the seller is to find out the motivation behind um, why they're selling the property you need to find out the reason why they need to dispose the property it could be various reasons for example downsizing it could be upgrades could be the uh, moving out because they want to live with their son it could be migration there are many many just any kind of reason i have seen so many reasons and a lot of time is out of this world it's not in the textbook so the art of negotiation is to find out the background of the owner in terms of their motivation remember the word is motivation why they're selling it now not only that you need to get the um, the price um, that you want but also you are providing them with a service you are actually solving their problem end of the day when you run a business if you're planning to run this as a business it's not always about how much profit you are making but instead you are providing a solution and trying to solve people are actually facing so just a solution for them to to move on something like this so in order for you to get the the reasons why they're selling the property you need to ask the right question now once you understand the reason why they're selling the property and then you provide them with a sound solution the likelihood for you to get what you want especially on the price is very high so this is not something that the agent is doing all right a lot of agents they just get listing and then they put it on the website and then that's it they never go one step deeper to understand why the seller is selling now this is what I said. Property is, is a people business, right? By the end of the day, it's not just about the profit that you're making, but instead you're helping the people to move on. 
Now, this is the reason why they want to sell in the first place. Step number five, get into agreement. Now, if you get the previous step correctly, then it is much easier for you to get into agreement with the seller. Now, sometimes you don't need a lot of uh, very complicated agreements to start with. A simple agreement, how much he's willing to sell it and how much that you will be selling. You just let him know that that is the kind of arrangement. Due to the legal processes, you need to indicate how much you are getting because otherwise, if the investors are getting loan and therefore there will be a gap in between that undeclared. So we try to work as transparent as possible so that the, um, the process of locking the property and selling the property and hand over the property will be smooth. So yes, this is the, um, the one of the way to do it. And secondly, if you really prep up your work in the previous step, then sometimes you don't even need an agreement with the owner. You just need some kind of verbal, okay? But obviously, if you're doing the verbal, then when the investors is coming in to sign the um, sales and purchase agreement, you need to spell out then and there how much you will be getting paid. Um, for this property. So it's either you do it out front for the agreement, otherwise you, you can have your portion or profit in the sales and purchase agreement. Step number six, pass your deal to the investor. Now, if you're done with the previous five steps correctly, now it is time for you to get the deal and pass it to your investors. Like I said, if you have existing pool of investors, it is much easier for you to sell the property, right? But if you don't have, then you need to spend time looking and shopping for investors that might be interested in your property. There's another way how you can do this is that collaborate with uh, local agents. Now, agents, they have their own resources. So how to work with agents is that you have to upfront with them that how much they are getting from this deal. It could be half of for whichever the, uh, the price, the profit margin in between the selling price and the locking price or it can be a um, certain percentage from the, uh, the final uh, purchase price, but only if your profit margin allow. So this is the, the way how you're going to um, the sell the property. So these are the six steps how to get the wholesale property. To recap, step one, finding the seller. Step number two, get the market value. Step number three, determine the profit margin. Step number four, negotiate with the seller. Step number five, get into agreement. Step number six, pass the deal to your investors. If you find this video is useful, please give me a thumbs up. And if you think that I can improve on certain topics within this video, so let me know in the comments. And don't forget, subscribe to my YouTube channel. By the way, did you know that the mechanism behind the wholesale property is very much like a lease option? But if you haven't heard about lease option or if you want to know more about lease option, get into this description now down there. And there's a link for you to click for you to get a free ebook that I prepared for you. So until next time, thanks for watching. I see you in the next video.